This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're going to be talking about a topic that hopefully will open up some opportunities for you to scope out your future. Crime Prevention Award nominations. Yeah, you got that neighbor that you say, God, you know, they're really on top of it. They're looking out for me. Nominate them. And Tywater Arts Outreach and then Opera in the Park is coming back again right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. And you know what? I'm hearing all over the place that things are coming back, jobs are available, but are you qualified? Well, we're going to have a, a big event here in Norfolk that you might want to participate that will get you qualified. And I'm going to go right to Dr. Larry. <laughs> okay, what do I mean by a big event to get people October qualified? October 1st, we're going to have a registered apprenticeship expo at Scope. Be about 100 companies, and we want to encourage those people who want to find out more about apprenticeship or looking for an apprenticeship to come and talk to various companies and see what if they could work out their future there. Okay, let me talk Turkey now. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot about second, you know, education after, go on and get that degree. Mm -hmm. But you're talking apprenticeship. Well, the apprenticeship program is a, is a way to post-secondary education. First you get some training, you work for a company, uh, they pay for you to go to school, and then you have people who complete their associate's degree, and then a lot, of, a lot of people go on and get a bachelor's degree. So it's just a different way of going there, but at, when you're doing it, you have a full-time job and you're employed. Wow, that makes every mom and dad happy. Right. <laughs> and the person that's being employed. Okay, Rick Brooks, uh, registered apprenticeship uh, consultant with the Department of Labor and Industry. I just made, I started off by saying things are coming back. Are they? Yes, they are, and uh, we're very busy at this time of the year registering apprentices uh, to go to, to the community colleges, to the technical centers, and uh, to get into those various occupations. Because I'm also sensing the jobs are opening up, but the qualified people are not necessarily in line for those jobs. You know, there's a great demand for getting people who are qualified, but at the same time, they realize that their, the apprenticeship offers that opportunity for them to get the training, get, get the on-the-job training, and allow them to learn and earn while they're learning. Okay, now I've heard every kid who's uh, 18 or a little older says, I want to be in charge. So I love it. You brought a guy on. Who is in charge? Because it's got down here that you are the founder and owner of Norfolk Plumbing, Inc. Yes, sir. Um, so Jeff Hux, how does it feel to be founder and owner? Uh, it feels great. Yeah. I, I do everything there, you know. Now, what, what got you to decide that you wanted to do your own company? Uh, well, it was just my trade uh, that I've been involved in for 34 years, and the timing was just right for, for me and my family to start our own business. Um, okay, so when you started off, you, when, when did you start off? Uh, 2001. So you started off with how many employees? One. Myself. You. And, uh, and me and my wife started the company, and we started on the kitchen table, and things have just escalated since then. So when did you hire your first other employee besides you? That was you? about a year after we started this company. So how did you go about finding an employee? Uh, actually, there were a couple of people that I had worked with before were my first hires. So you knew their work? Yes. Because when that, when that man or woman goes out representing the comp Norfolk Plumbing, they're representing you. That's correct. So what does the apprenticeship program mean to you then? Uh, for me, it's just a, a great way for us to develop skilled tradesmen. Uh, college is not for everybody. It wasn't for me. I felt like I was spinning my wheels. A lot of young men and women feel the <coughs> same way. And for me to qualify and, and train a good technician uh, that's well-rounded, uh, it's a combination of the school uh, that we do through the VOTEC program and the on-the-job training that, that we provide. And this apprenticeship program together in the end product after four years it gives us a well-developed tradesman that will represent my company, has the knowledge base, the math, and, and everything behind them to, to perform the job the way that we want to perform. Let me talk turkey. I'm, I, I want, I've been a really good employee for a long, long time. I don't know a lick about plumbing except for what I've read in the manual when I put in the filter mm -hmm. under my sink uh, twice. Um, I come and apply for a job. I've been a really good employee, but there's a guy who's gone through an apprenticeship program. Who are you going to hire? Well, the, the person that's been through the apprenticeship program is, is definitely going to get a, a leg up on, on somebody that's coming in cold. Uh, Absolutely. That's, 
I mean, that's that's Turkey, right? That's I mean, the, absolutely. That person has taken the time to to discipline themselves to uh, study, work a full time job, and uh, pass the, the, that coursework. Uh, they deserve that. Uh, a lot of uh, students. Um, are not ready for college, but at the same time, the apprenticeship allows them that opportunity to make a choice. If they want to continue on and mm -hmm. go to higher education, they can go in a certificate program in a community college, or they can just continue to grow within their company. But well, here's the beautiful part. When you're hired as an apprentice, you're hired as an employee immediately. Right. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. no, it's not an intern where some interns are paid, some interns are not paid, but you are an employee immediately when you're an apprentice. Okay, now you may have an opportunity to bump up your salary once you get off yeah, the apprentice, but absolutely. you're still a... Well, well, as a matter of fact, you get incremental increases at least once a year. That's part of being an apprentice. Okay, you got a guy in front of you, he's got a choice to make. He's uh, got some skills, he's really good with his you know, hands, he's got, he's got a good uh, working understanding of, uh, of machinery. Mm -hmm. um, but he's looking at going to get his degree in history. No. What would you say to him? Well, I said no because I thought you were talking about he could take history classes. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. just going to try to learn a trade. <laughs> no, but I mean, those are some of the decisions that are, you know, well, go get that liberal arts degree. Well, if, if that's what he wants to do, then follow your passion. I, I okay. won't just. Well, you just hit on a key. Just follow yeah. that passion. Follow You've your got passion. a kid that might be good with his hands in machinery, mm -hmm. but he's being told, go get that history degree. Mm -hmm. All right. And, I, and I, when I sit and talk with high school students, I. I often look up and I say, you see that light that's over your head? You need that light, don't you? Somebody had to put it in. Somebody had to wire it up. You like being comfortable in the summertime. You like the AC. As soon as that AC is off, as soon as your toilet doesn't work, as soon as your water stops. <laughs> Shouldn't have told you that in yeah, pre-tape. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? Yeah. You want somebody that has the knowledge and skill base to repair that. Well, see, I was really kind of hoping you'd bring an electrician on because I've got this kitchen light that doesn't. Do you, do you do that too? <laughs> Larry, it's October 1st? October 1st, let's go. And go and, online. And from 3 to 7.30, everybody's welcome. It's a great way to see what companies are available. Bring your resume if you want to come along. We do require, though, that people ought to have a GED because most of these companies, most of them, require a GED. Okay. And so, yeah, but it, it's a great opportunity. Super. And if you go to Norfolk.gov, it's right there on the front page. It's right there. Um, scope your future. Scope your future. And, uh, and check it out. It's you know, one of the things we, we, were, we were very elated about last year was the fact that many of the, the uh, potential apprentices were hired by several companies. Uh, the, some of the companies ran out of uh, applications. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Go up and check it out on Norfolk.gov. Right. Thanks a lot for coming together to Thank really you. Uh, Thank you. open up somebody's future. When we come back, you got that neighbor? Let's report him. Stay tuned. Attention job seekers. At Scope Your Future on October 1st, there will be more than 100 employers potentially hiring for registered apprenticeship positions from 3 to 7.30 p.m. at Norfolk Scope. Apprenticeships can include paid on-the-job training, industry-issued credentials, and occupational education. Scope your future, all at Norfolk Scope. Visit NorfolkDevelopment.com for details. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspective. You know, I tease this segment by saying report your neighbor, and these guys are going to correct me on that, because it's nominate your neighbor. And Yvette Brown, president of CPAN, how are you doing? Just fine. Thank okay, you. There, there are a lot of A's in there. What's CPAN stand for? Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association of Norfolk. Okay, now the viewer is going to recognize you from uh, last week's show, <laughs> but now we're on to talk about uh, nominating your your neighbor, your uh, or anybody who you think had a vital role in crime oh, prevention. Right? Yes. Now you got some cohorts in your job here. Yes. Mary Babcock, you're also with yes, CPAN. Yes, I am. And we were talking. I I made the comment in pre-tape that you've been doing this forever, but that's not true. Nah, maybe only ten or eleven years. What, why have you been active with CPAN for so long? Because I believe in what we do. I believe that neighbors need to look out for neighbors. And the Citizens Police Academy works together with the police and other law enforcement individuals and organizations to promote safety and safe neighborhoods. And these are, these are residents who really want to take an interest in, 
So this, the Crime Prevention Award, is really a way of recognizing not just those people, the, the people who went through the academy, but p people on a day-to-day -day basis that are making a difference, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. Now there's a guy sitting between you two that does make a difference day in and day out, and that's Officer, Officer Antonio Herrera. How you doing? How you doing? I gotta ask you, who, who's controlling it here? These two gals, or? Uh, they, they control it. I just help out. You got the uniform on, though. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of, I mean, you're really talking about in partnership with the resident. On the yes. Side, so um, how does that make your job easier? Our job with them making it easier is basically we take the knowledge that the citizens give us. Uh, obviously, as officers, we go from one call from one end of the city to the other side of the city, so we're not able to stay in one spot mm -hmm. as much as we like to. So it actually depends on citizens to give us information to say, hey, this car's been here for a week or so, it doesn't belong here, or these people are walking in my neighborhood, um, we've never seen a humor before, they're knocking on doors and checking people's yards, and we take that information and that's how we solve crime. There's been some really cool people who have done some, well, actually there's been some real ordinary people that have done some really cool stuff that have been nominated and, and received the award over. Yes, yes. So yes. what about that viewer that's sitting here saying, I'm, you know, okay, so I called, I called and made this thing happen, but it's not much. What would you say to that person? I'd say, I hope their neighbor knows that they called and made things happen mm -hmm. and would nominate them. Last year, we had a young lady from the elementary school that was nominated and won a crime prevention award. And what she did is, with her fellow students, she talked to them about bullying. She told them that there's nothing wrong with tattling. She was an inspiration to her fellow students, and the teachers at the school were very impressed with her. She is a young lady that didn't think she would possibly win anything. She had no idea she was nominated. And when she, her name was announced, I remember so well, she cried the whole time the nomination was Oh, ready. no, you're kidding. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. What kinds of things can people be nom nominated for? Well, organizations and individuals can be nominated. These are for things that occurred last year, right. 2013. So we have to think back on things that occurred then. Oh, come on, Mary. we got to think back. I'm sorry. <laughs> Difficult for all of us, but yeah, that's the way <laughs> it, gets, it is. It gets harder yeah, every year. It is, but we, you know, we look at individuals and organizations, large and small groups, individuals. It could be a business owner that does something within the community that makes a difference to make it easier for people to feel comfortable in their business setting. It could be a, an individual that does wonderful things in their own community, and a lot of people are not looking to be recognized. Right. In fact, we most need of them to. aren't. Yeah, most of them aren't. So, but there are a lot of people doing a lot of great stuff. So where can somebody go to get a nomination form or get somebody nominated? Well, they can contact my office. Uh, my phone number would be 664-6901. Or they can email me at pdcrimeprevention at norfolk.gov. Okay. Well, I am looking forward to the event in... October. Yes. It's October. October 6th. And it's going to be still good food? Oh, the oh. best. Where's it's, it going to be? It's going to be at the Double Tree by Hilton. All right. Yes. And this, this, uh, this event, I got to say, over the years has really grown to be a super, super event. Yes. So uh, tickets go pretty quick. Yes. And if you'd like tickets, you can contact the Crime Prevention Unit or you can come contact Edith Waring or me. <laughs> Look me up. <laughs> there you go. And and I can guarantee you, you've already kind of teased you, I can guarantee some high drama with some people because they are totally surprised, unless yes. they're Miles and Jet. Yeah. <laughs> Miles and Jet, I think, are campaigning for the award for a third year in a row. <laughs> I don't know. But I want to thank you guys for everything that you do to really bring the awareness of the role that residents can play in making us have a high quality of life where life is celebrated daily right here in Norfolk. So go ahead and nominate that neighbor. Report them. No, no. Yes. Report them. Well, you <laughs> nominate can report them, them too. Before, and don't for forget doing, city nominate. employees too. Yes. That's right. So you yes. got that city yeah. employee that's made a difference? A police officer Absolutely. that has made a difference. Uh, feel free to nominate them. City employee. All right. Well, you know, thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We appreciate everything that you guys do. Thank so you. When we come back, we got some really special stuff just for you with Arts Outreach. Stay tuned.
Come here. Dad. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. My next guest um, is a special lady, and I'm going to put her on the spot because I, I want to do that. Every time I see Marianne show up in an event, she's got a different instrument in her hand, <laughs> and she can play it well. Um, but this isn't about her performance. It's really about the role and the magic that uh, the arts can bring into someone's life. Right, Marianne? That's right. Marianne Tobes, the uh, founder, executive director for Tower Arts Outreach. But I do want to talk about Marianne Tobes first, though. Uh-oh. Because wh what was your journey to get into this? Well, it really goes way back, Bob, and I'll put it in a nutshell. I'm the second oldest of 11 children. Hello! 11 kids in 14 years. And so while my sister helped rein us all in, I was kind of the chief instigator and troublemaker. <laughs> and uh, very It is wonderful being number two, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm very willing to uh, come up with new ideas for uh, having fun and getting people to join in. And so um, through my, my career, I've always wanted to uh, focus on my creative side. And so music has always been very important to me. And... I wanted to keep that going even as I developed um, the money-making skills of office administration and public relations and, and things that would you know, help me have a gainful employment. And so arts, Typewater Arts Outreach started 10 years ago because I uh, was working with another nonprofit out in Utah with a very similar mission, and I saw a way that we could bring this mission of sharing the joy and healing power of the arts with people who have special needs. I wanted to bring it back to Hampton Roads, my, my newfound home since the early 90s. And so we brought it back and started very organically with just a few friends mm -hmm. and brought artists in, first musicians and visual artists and dancers, and we grew slowly but purposely to a point where we're involving hundreds of artists every year and going to dozens and dozens, nearly 70 locations in seven Hampton Roads cities um, sharing the joy of the arts with thousands of people every year. Okay, I think I know the answer to this, but I know when you deal with some artists and you've got booking agents and all that kind of stuff, the deliverable is how many bus did you put in the seat, you know, the sales and the tickets and whatever. Mm. Where do you, how do you define success when you have yes. an event? Our deliverables are very different, and we have um, surveys that we use to evaluate our success. And really the success of the program is with our participants. Were they engaged? Did this program make them feel better? Did it help them forget about their troubles? Did they learn something new? Were they able to uh, engage in some creative self-expression? We ask staff to help us uh, measure how active people were involved in, in our experience and what was the measure of pleasure, so to speak, in, in their group of participants. And, and so they're working with people who have special needs and who are very challenged. and. Often, when we come to a program, we see kind of closed, um, stressful, not happy looks, and by the time we leave, 90% or more of the time, those looks are replaced by obvious appreciation, mm -hmm. open inquiry, enthusiasm, happiness, uh, talking, and self-expression, really coming out of their shells. So it's a, it's a big switch. Yeah. Now, how many times have you run into somebody, when you ask them to get engaged, oh, I can't sing? Or I, I, you know, I can't draw. I can't draw a straight line without a ruler. Sure. What do you do with that person? That happens a lot. And you know what? What I like to say is that there are two different. Um, there's always a, a time in our lives, I think, to engage in the arts. They're, they're, the arts will have a, a value at some point in our lives, and a lot of times it's when we have time on, on our hands, or when we've been, um, when we've been faced with uncertainty or, or challenges, mm -hmm. significant challenges in our lives, arts can be an inspiration. And so we encourage people to use the arts to help them get out of a, a situation and, and into the larger, uh, the, their larger life as a whole. And so when someone says they can't draw or they can't sing, I always tell them that the process is more important than the product. Don't worry about how you sound because singing has a lot of benefits in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Raising your voice in song. Now, we talk about outreach, but now you're talking about connecting. We're, yes, and, and we like to say that the arts build community. So you've got the visual art program with the Art Connection Hampton Roads. Tell me about that. Yeah, thank you, um, Bob. We've got a new program. It's called Art Connection Hampton Roads, and it's a partnership with Old Dominion University and Tidewater Arts Outreach. And what our mission is with that is to make 
original works of art available to health and human service agencies throughout cool. Hampton Roads. So there's a big vetting process involved. Right now we're working with donors and artists to collect donated works of art. And we're going to be um, putting digitized images of that artwork on our website, which is the Art Connection Hampton Road, so separate website. Okay. Uh, and then we will invite health and human service agencies in to look at this art and consider what they might want to use in their locations. And the vetting process of getting art into the location will include staff and clients to look at art together and to have an educated discussion about art with our staff who will facilitate that, that process of deciding what artwork will look good in their locations. And then we will help that be professionally installed. And we're, we're basing this on other art connections in other parts of the country. And it was re originated by Faye Slover, who's an ODU graduate mm -hmm. and Norfolk native, who uh, is living a long and wonderful life in Boston. And she's had a prolific art career, and she started the Art Connection up there. So we're very excited to bring Super. it here. We'll have an opening on September 4th at the uh, Selden Arcade to help launch this and help cool. the community understand what it's about. You're off the hook because I got about a half a second. That's it to talk about golf. Do you golf? Uh, I don't golf, but <laughs> I love our golf tournament. It's a lot of fun, and we've had uh, wonderful tournaments for 10 years running now. So October 2nd, it's our next biggest fundraiser, and fundraisers are very important for mm -hmm. our organization because we're in these, we're in shelters, we're in nursing homes, we're in hospitals. It's not like we've got our programs on big marquees, so it's a way for us to get the important funding to get our programs on the map. I wish I had more than six and a half minutes with you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Friends. Now you know why I think she's cool, because she's energy and really finely focused. And guess what? When we come back, we're going to talk about opera, another art outreach yeah. in the park. Stay tuned. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I am so excited because September 6th is going to be opera in the park, but we're not going to talk about that right away because I want to talk to Russell Allen, President and CEO, Virginia Opera, about the upcoming season because it builds upon opera in the park. Absolutely. How's it going, Russell? D going very well. 40 years? 40 years. Virginia Opera is celebrating its 40th anniversary Now, you season. have not been there the whole time. No, I haven't <laughs> been there the whole time. But cool stuff you got on the schedule. Yeah, it's a great season. We decided to celebrate the season with four of the sort of different genres of opera that we have uh, been so good at over the course of these 40 years. So we're starting with what many consider to be a Broadway show. Okay. But uh, Sweeney Todd, it's by Stephen Sondheim. Oh, yeah, it's great. And even Stephen Sondheim considers it one of his most operatic works. He's been known to say that if it's produced by a Broadway theater, it's Broadway. If it's produced by an opera company, it's opera. And many opera companies have produced it. And he is always right. He is always right. So what do you have next? Next following is HMS Pinafore, Operetta. We've Ooh. done great operettas, Gilbert and Sullivan, over mm -hmm. the years, and HMS Pinafore we haven't done in about 17 years, so it's been a while. So we're looking forward to bringing that back in a new production. And uh, then we come to Salome, Rick Richard Strauss's uh, classic melodrama, mm -hmm. and it's going to be an incredible new production, again, in, in collaboration with Portland Opera. And uh, we will be uh, presenting that right after the first of the year. And we'll close the season with a new production of Traviata, Verdi's classic opera. All right. So wow, you are hit hitting the whole spectrum. Italian opera, German opera, operetta, and Broadway. The other thing that I like about the opera, too, is you bring in performers from around the country. So you've got top-notch performers, but you also incorporate a lot of top-notch performers right here in the local community. Absolutely. Um, we draw our chorus right here from Hampton Roads. They audition. They're an audition chorus, mm -hmm. and they're uh, really an incredible group of people. And they will also be featured on Opera in the Park. And then we work with the Virginia Symphony, 
and the Virginia Symphony will be the uh, orchestra in the pit for Sweeney Todd and also an, on Opera in the Park. Okay, now I can't, I can't assure everyone might be watching. Will you have a pit in the park? No, we won't have <laughs> a pit in the Good, park. Good, no digging down. No, not at all. Actually, the orchestra will be on stage, and the singers will be in front of the orchestra for this in, in Opera in the Park. I got to ask you, does the orchestra and the singers know this? Oh, yes. Because there's yes. rules about uh, performance in the opera, right? Well, remember, this is a concert ah. operatic production. We'll be doing a, a, a wide variety of different selections from that are opera favorites and operetta favorites and Broadway favorites. So it's a, it's a really diverse program that has something for everybody. It's really a, a great program that people will enjoy. A little teaser? A uh, little teaser. Well, uh, <laughs> we're going to. I'll, uh, let me mention one thing, though. Okay. It's conducted by uh, Adam Turner, who is our principal conductor. Oh, cool. And uh, he's also our artistic advisor. And he is uh, really an incredible talent and has conducted a number of productions at Virginia Opera and will be also conducting Sweeney Todd. Um, as a little teaser, let me say that we will be doing uh, selections from some of our upcoming opera pr productions this season. So you'll be hearing a little bit of Sweeney Todd, a little bit of La Traviata, and uh, some other surprise, wonderful works that everybody will enjoy. So for that, uh, let's, be, let's be up front. For that husband who says, okay, bring me a comfortable chair. He might be in for some surprises. He'll be in for some good surprises. And for his wife, she'll be happy too. Everybody's going to be happy, including the kids. So there, there are going to be opportunities there. We've, we have our education department out in force. There are going to be some opportunities for the kids to have a good time above and beyond listening to the music. Now, how are you going to convince the opera singer to use a microphone? Well, actually, opera singers do things like this with <laughs> some regularity. So, uh, you know, though we don't mic at the Harrison Opera House, uh, we will have microphones, obviously. The orchestra will be mic'd as well, just as the orchestra is not mic'd at Chrysler Hall. Uh, but for an outdoor venue, you have to have microphones and, and sound enhancement. And then, of course, there's going to be wonderful food. And wonderful food. There'll be a number of different food trucks there and many things to drink. And uh, it, again, it's a beautiful setting at Town Point Park, and everybody's going to have a good time, and it never rains. And cost? Uh, cost is free. I thought I'd end on that. Free and open to the public. So come on down and... Please, everybody join us. Bring your chair. Absolutely. Okay. Russell, thanks a lot, and, and congratulations on entering into your 40th season. Thanks very wow. much, Bob. It's great to be here. Thank you. We want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV 48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you. Thanks a lot. Yeah.